going on, world? Welcome to another edition of the Black Mental Health Podcast. I'm your host, Reg. Join the day. I have no guests. It's just me. Um, I'm happy to be back, guys. Um, I'm, I, I thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I know it's been a while since I've actually been out recording and, and putting information out there to help with my community and doing my part to make sure we all heal in our own way. Um, as most of you may know, um, you know what, before I even get to that, I, I have to really express how my gratitude for all the people, all the people who gave me the emotional support, the financial support, my friends, my brothers, my family for coming through and, and, and carrying me through, uh, a very traumatic situation and um, I'll get more into the story as we talk, but I f- really, truly feel like there was a higher power to um, that maybe allowed this situation to happen so people can know um, that this story is real of how I feel about mental health and it wasn't like a, like a fad. So I think everybody um, who actually came out and just did all this stuff, man, it, it brought tears to my eyes, man. And I really was in the, in the hospital balling and just crying because I, I was very thankful and grateful for all the, the outpour of support and love. And I'm just hoping that I can make an even bigger impact with my platform and the things that I do. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do my best to say everybody to, to tell everybody, thank you personally, but I just wanted to make sure that I don't go any further without saying thank you to all this, the love support and everything that everyone has given me um, along the way. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the show. So on December 27th, um, about 12, 27, 12, 30 ish around that, that time, someone ran a red light and T-boned me. So they literally, I, I had a green light, they had a red light, but I guess they didn't know or whatever the case would be. And they T-boned me. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I was doing Uber, um, not at the time of the accident, but um, that was one of the income streams that I was bringing in. So I was doing Uber to help uh, on my entrepreneur journey. So that's sort of the reason why I was out that time of night. I really like the nighttime hours because I'll have the freedom in the daytime to do other things. So um, I was coming home um, and I had just got off the phone with my fiance and we were laughing and there's, you know, just any typical normal night. And the guy just came across and hit me. Now, in my mind, still to this day, to be keeping honest with you guys, I still don't believe this happened to me, man. I am, I'm still trying to understand why or what, what was the reasoning for it. But, um, and, I, and I came to a few con- conclusions. Maybe I'll get into it. But I still don't know why this happened because I would have almost rather me, <laughs> excuse me, been doing something uh, out of the normal, like, cheating on my fiance or stealing or just doing something that you're not supposed to be doing at those hours is in the, in something like that homie hurt, uh, happened to me because then I, I'll look at it as karma. But if something like that happens and you, you were literally going home to your family to kiss your kid and do everything that you do on a normal basis and something like that just change that hits you and it changed the trajectory of your life. It really, it starts to affect you mentally and emotionally because it was like, I don't know what was going on. So he hit me and um, I wound up hitting into another car with, a, I, I believe from what people were telling me, it was another young lady. And I can't really speak too much because there's a pending case. Um, so I'll try to divulge as much information as I can without, you know, you, you guys know. <laughs> but um, so he ran the red light. He hit me. I hit into the other person. All I was mem- All I remember was I got hit. Um, I woke up or I guess I was unconscious. I woke up and I was in a passenger seat um, of the vehicle. Um, as you can see, guys, I'm recording in my car. I think that's about to be the new space. It's, like, it's a nice little quiet space I can get to myself, especially with having the kids. Um, and I'll speak more of why too as well. Um, but so I, 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 I got hit into the girl um, or the young lady and I was in the passenger, passenger seat. And the person that, that um, opened the door they seen the accident they were like yo you have to get out of the car the car smoking so i guess it was about to go on fire or whatever the case may be and then they were like yo where's the driver and i'm like i was the driver so um i got hit into the passenger seat and 
all I know is I couldn't get out. I was like, my seatbelt's on. Mind you, I was driving. I was in the driver's seat. My, there's no way my seatbelt could get on. So I couldn't move. So I guess the logical thing was that I felt, or in my mind was, um, I, I got a, a seatbelt on. So then I, I, they was like, you don't have a seatbelt on. Let's go. We got to pull you out. And, and it was because my leg was, was broken, uh, broken, fractured. So all I know, my leg was hanging like, 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 just like a leaf, a, a branch off of a tree. It was just hanging. So I didn't know what was happening. I just know my leg was in an, in an immense amount of pain. So the young lady pulled me. I was actually a young lady. I don't know. Uh, God, she, that, that's my angel, man. I wish I could thank her. I wish it was who I, w- I would do something for the person. So if you, if you see this, you happen to cross, come across this, reach out to me, and I'll definitely find a way to, like, either do something to help you that I can. Um, so she wound up pulling me out the car, um, and she didn't even have a phone at the time. So she pulled me out the car. I was on the side of the road. My leg still hanging like a branch off of a tree. And she wound up pulling me off, out the road. And I'm on the ground, like, uh, just crying, just in immense amount of pain. And I don't know what's going on. I just know I was just in so much pain. So I wound up getting pulled out, She's laying on the ground. She she bought somebody's phone, and they called my fiance. Now, because I'm a jokester a lot, and I don't know why she think I would joke something about that. She didn't believe that was happening. She was like, stop playing. I just talked to him like 15 minutes ago. Like, who is this girl calling my phone? And mind you, they didn't even call from my phone. They called from my unknown number, and she don't. she's not about to answer. My fiance's not about to answer no random number at 1230, 1 o'clock at night. But I guess some guy, again, things work in your favor where she answered. And I'm like, yo, tell him I'm messed up. And I ain't say messed up. I said the F word. I'm like, yo, I'm fucked up. And, and she was like, oh, my God. And um, mind you, we only had our one car at the time. So she had my two kids in the house by herself. Who did she call um, to help her? Like, what, 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 what can she do? So she wound up calling my friend. If you guys have, haven't seen, it's an episode with my friend Anthony Walker, who actually been through um, a similar situation. He had to come and pick her up. Luckily, he lives close to where I, I stay at, and he had to come pick her pick her up. Um, and his wife got man. And it was episode 14, if you guys want to go back and check, episode 14 with Anthony Walker. I, I was ejected out of a car of, on Interstate 95. So he wound up having to come pick her up. And mind you, you got to imagine the traumatic situation is bringing him back to because the same thing happened to him not only, not even eight months before or eight months prior. So he's taking her to come pick me up or to come see what happened. And from her point of view, when she came to the, the scene, she seen the car. So when with me saying I'm messed up and with the car, when she seen the car messed up, she like, oh my God, like, I, what, what's, I, like is he dead? Like she, she, the worst things happened in her mind. And um, so she's, she, I, I hear her out there screaming. Mind you, I'm uh, fortunately the ambulance got there in a quick amount of time. Um, there was a few people around um, to help call and come to the scene. Um, so the, I'm in the, the ambulance in an immense amount of pain and I, honestly, I never broken a bone really. Even when I played football, I always made part smart decisions as far as like I'm running out of bounds or um, I never like to get hit. To get to, to be honest with you, like I was always one the one to do the hit, and so I'm like I gotta play defense. So I never broken anything. I never really broke. This was the first time I had I had actual like injuries that uh, was insurmountable. Mind you, when you're younger and you you uh you get injured and stuff like that, I feel like the first time it happened, it's a shock. And then after a while, you know how, you know, the pain tolerance, uh, you know, pain management almost. Um, So you're able to deal with that pain. With me, this is the first time I'm messing up anything. So it was hard for me to even fathom what was going on. Mind you, I'm still trying to um, process everything. So I'm in and out of consciousness, um, in and out of consciousness, thinking time, it's a time lapse. I'm thinking, I'm like stuff is just happening. I'm thinking stuff happening fast and it's actually happening longer t- spans of times than I'm actually expecting. So um, I'm in the hospital room. All I remember is um, I was laying in the bed and they were like, oh, first before I even passed by, they had to break my or pop my leg in the place to get it. Um, I guess on the, the stretch bed that you lay on, they, they had to put my leg in the cast and with it being, so what happened was my leg got, my I had an open fracture fibula um, and 
my leg bone was popping out of the actual leg. So it, it, it popped out. So that's why I was, it was hanging like a tree branch. And um, so they had to pop it into place so to get it into the ambulance um, into the, the the stretcher. I'm, excuse me for not knowing what those terms are called, but um, they had to get me on there. And so it's cold, mind you. It's December 27th, two days after Christmas. Um, so I'm still in the thing in the extreme amount of pain. They had to crack it into place. Oh my God, that hurt. They had to rip my clothes open. So mind you, now it's cold. It's like I don't even know how cold it is outside. But I remember they had to cut my cut my. Uh, clothes off to open they wrong my my hood my friend with the hoodie i just got and not saying wrong because they were trying to save my life but um that hoodie i just got um but it's material stuff but um they cut that open cut that and so we get into the uh ambulance and get into the hospital now i'm in the i guess i don't even know what the room i guess i'm in the emergency room where i'm seeing gunshot victims a dude get shot 12 times and he was bloody screaming because i guess they was pulling the bullets out so i'm in there that's traumatic in itself like oh my god i'm about to die literally that's what i thought to myself so i'm thinking i'm about to die um i they had to do some surgery i'm in and out of consciousness and then all i remember as i woke up and the first thing i told my uh doctor or nurse or whoever was with me was like um is my fiance here she was like yeah I was like tell him to p- tell her to play the phone book because I forgot <laughs> I forgot the pen she always getting on me to waiting at the last minute and they're gonna cut it off and I'm like um this the wrong time to be having your phone off when you're going through some traumatic situation like this so I'm like you'll tell her to play the phone book so they like this dude damn near on his deathbed and all he worried about <laughs> is the phone being cut off. And so, mind you, I'm thinking that this all 15 minutes, she told me that that was like a four-hour lapse before she even got to see me, maybe even longer. Um, So she didn't see me until like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Mind you, can you imagine? She seen the, the young lady that got hit, um, and she seen like basically the victims around it, and it's like everybody's walking out, everybody's working fine, and they, and she said they, um, they asked her was like, well, who's your boyfriend or who's your fiance? It was like the guy with the dreads. She's like, yeah. They was like, oh yeah, he he ain't looking good. So I, I just couldn't imagine the emotional trauma that was on her. So um, fast forward a little bit because I, I don't want to drag the story out. Um, just trying to give you guys a context of what the the night was. Um. I get transferred into the hospital uh, room and um, I just still was in disbelief because I, it was just a normal thing. And um, I, I, I actually got to experience the, the, the thing, the fact that life can change in an instance. Um, um, before I move any forward, RIP Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle and the stuff that he was doing and I've his death is hitting me a little bit harder because I know what he was trying to do for his community and the fact that some, that his community took him out it made me put my life in perspective now to this day and just looking back on what I've been through with my accident um I was like man my environment almost eat me like I was in a neighborhood that was poverty stricken and somebody not paying attention and, and and they almost took me out knowing the type of work, not not even knowing, not unknowingly the type of work that I was trying to do to help, help you. And I heard a quote, like people will hurt the very people that is trying to help them that God sent to save them. And, um, it just was playing this week up to this day has been paying uh, an emotional toll on me because I, I, I really, felt that and it, and I'm still questioning like well which what, what how do you help your community without being in it but going back to the uh the accident so I'm in the hospital bed um and it's just all type of emotions playing on my head am I going to walk again am I going to be able to use my hand again so I had um for those of you who are on video you can see like I have this line right here where um, something happened and sorry for not knowing the medical terms, but I couldn't move and I can't really make a fist now as tight as I want to like my fist like this and you see like the difference, but I can't really make a fist. Um, something happened with this. I don't know. My middle finger and index finger is messed up. I had a, a 
a cut, a real big cut. You guys seen the picture, but I guess I can show, show you the healing process. But I had a real big cut right there. Um, I had bruised ribs. Um, what else? It just was a bunch of like nagging issues. Oh, and with, along with the open fracture. So I'm thinking, am I gonna be able to play? I'm mean, not saying I'm all athletic, but I wasn't. I was doing gym three to four times when I could. Um, I was playing basketball at least once a week. So I'm thinking I'm never going to be able to walk again. I'm never going to be able to use my hand the way I want to. I'm never going to be able to do a push-up. I'm uh, like all of these issues. I'm going to be scared to drive. All of these things was running through my mind. And it was it was playing your mind playing tricks on you. And luckily, um, I had family to come and help, like just help give you the love that you need during that time because um, – one of the things, one of the biggest things that played a role into me in the hospital was I had my mother there consistently, my fiance there consistently, as much as they could be, my uh, godmother and, and, and my, my, my big sister was there. And um, shouts out to all of the ladies in my life that stayed consistently. And besides my male friends that like from the neighborhood or that I went to school with that I hold high, in high regard, there was no man figure in men figure in my life to help support. More importantly, or more specifically, it was no father there. So I broke down in tears because I was just like, man, this is the time where like women are natural nurturers, man, and and man, they're like God's greatest creature, man, uh, creation on this earth because we don't move without them, man. And they, they, they really know how to take care of people. And like, they really are very caring, man. And to know that, uh, to feel alone, like there's no men to like give you that, you know, that boost you need, like not saying you disregard the woman, but it ain't nothing like your dad or your, or male figure just pumping that, that testosterone back into you, man. And I just, Man, I was just so in like mad because I uh I, I just didn't have nobody there. My dad, mind you, my dad lives in uh North Carolina, so I didn't really expect him um to do too much because he has his own life down there. Like we live in Philadelphia. Like I'm not really expecting too much of him. And I was just struggling, like, man, I wish somebody that, that was a man here. I promise you guys, five, maybe five, six hours. I don't mind you, time was a lap, so I don't know. I, I probably went to sleep or whatever and dozed off. All I know is I looked out the door, my dad was walking in, man. And even when I'm talking, man, that stuff still brings, like, tears to me because I was just complaining to the woman in my life that there's no one here, no man here to take care of me or help take care of me. Like, it's all these women. And he walked in, and mind you, no one told him uh, like how, like any information, he, he, he didn't have any information. So from his point of view, it was like, man, I would have been on here even sooner. Y'all just met. That's what it was. We, he didn't know until the next day. So if I got into an accident on Thursday, um, he was here that Friday. Like he, he came as soon as he heard the news, like he, he, he bought the first train from North Carolina and came right up and walked in. And, um, because I didn't have my phone, nobody had his contact information to get in, cut, in touch with him. So we had to wind up getting the phone out of the car and contacting people and letting them know what the situation. That's why um, it took me so long for me to post it on social media to let everyone know. Um, but, man, I was so happy to see that man walk in, man. And mind you, anybody that know from the start of this podcast to up till now, man, like our relationship hasn't been the best. But I'm like, he gained back a couple years of like not being there off of just being there when you need him. You need him, man. Um, and we were already rep repairing and rebuilding our relationship. And we talked mostly every other week or every week sometimes, sometimes twice a week. And just the fact to have that man just roll up in there like that in the midst of me complaining, man, salute to him, man. And like, as much as we try to portray, uh, portray as men that we don't need our fathers and we good, we made peace with not having our father and not even making peace because all of us are still hurting in some type of way. But you, you take that bravado aside, you ain't, you want your daddy there, man. You still want your daddy proud of you. You want that, that male figure to be there to support you, especially in your time of need. You need them in the stands when you're doing good and you need them in the, in the stands to help you when you're doing bad, man, to give you, to give you that insight. So to see that man walk in, man, it, it just brought tears to my eyes. 
And man, I mean, I'm so ever, forever grateful for that moment, man. It's still it's so special to me. And not to take away my lady, see, because my the woman, mind you, he still had to go home. So they had to still help me afterwards. My mom, my sister, my fiance, especially my mom and my fiance. They was there throughout the whole process, throughout the whole process to like get me growing and getting back to health. But so, um, um, because of the vaccine, I, I wasn't able to walk. I had to get surgery on my on my leg. They put a metal rod in my leg to help with stability and to help with like because if I just got the I have to learn. Mind you, I'm learning all this now. If I had just the uh, the bone to heal, and they just put in a cast, I wouldn't be walking. Um, I wouldn't be able to walk for about a year, they say. But because of the metal rod, I'm, a, I'm able to put some pressure on my leg. Um, I'm in therapy um, for my hand and my leg. So I'm able to, I'm not being able to walk um, right away coming out of the hospital. I had to go home. I was in the hospital for maybe about a week. Um, I, was, I was able to go home. and But because I can't go home, um, operate, um, functionally with my hand and my leg, me and my family had to wind up moving back to my mom's house. Luckily, our lease was up. It was coming up, so we were already trying to move. But um, I had to wind up moving my mom's house. And now this, and at this period, mind you, my fiance and me are a partnership. So we were getting ready to move. Me being down, that takes away income. That takes away... Uh, uh strength for for moving now the her role gets turned upside down she's depending on other people to help move to help pack to help get our kids from school we don't have a car to help go to work um just depending on everybody for a lot and if most of you who read my book and if you haven't go back go and purchase it suffer into success we on amazon you can hit the link on, uh in my bio it's, it's everywhere um reginaldahoward.com Y'all know that I didn't have the greatest relationship with my mother. We 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 were rebuilding it. So if you read the story, I don't want to give it away for the most of the party uh, to everybody. We didn't. We wound up not talking for a while, for years, or for a year almost, um, maybe longer. And now we have, and I vowed never to come back. And now I have to move my family into my mother's house. You get me? And. That's another psychological. So not only is she uh, bearing the weight of um, the fact that we have to move move and do all of that stuff on her own. She's basically by herself and um, figure that stuff out. I'm mentally struggling because I see her uh, going through that on top of just going through a traumatic situation. Now we're moving back into the place we vowed never to come back in our relationship is strained. Man, it's so many different things that was at play, man. And just going through just a lot during that time, it was just like, man, God, I, I I don't know what I'm 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 learning right now, what what lesson is for, but this is this is a tough one, man. This is a tough one. So for a while it was hard for me to accept what was happening, especially when I'm when you're coming from a place of dependent uh, in- independency, and now you're fully dependent on people, and and then my fiance is fully in charge, and she's got, she has to walk all of these far places, and used to being in the car, and now you got this baby, and mind you, we have a newborn. Uh, he's he was maybe about six seven months. We got to find babysitters. He's not in daycare because I'm usually the one that helps out with that. Like it was just so much thrown and out of whack your life changing in an instant man but I was like Reg that was that was the point when I had to talk to myself I had to mentally coach myself um and if you guys haven't I have I got my coaching program now if you guys haven't seen the Minty Clarity Coaching that's also originalhayhoward.com um yep shameless plug um, I was like, that, what would you tell somebody that was in your situation how would you help coach them do it so I had to just start uh coaching myself and one of the uh the things that was really being a nag to me was um that I had to accept the new version of my life and not hold on not keeping on holding on to the old version that I was I was used to uh 2018 was one of my most prosperous years of my life I was getting paid to speak the podcast was getting very popular um, I had just produced my book. I was just getting, I was finally on the path of starting to, to live in my dream. 
And um, that was one of the things that I was saying to God, praying to God in the hospital or, or um, in the ambulance, right? Like, God, I was just getting started. Please don't let this be the end of it because I, I feel like I was just getting on the path. Um, I didn't teach all my sons and um, my fiance everything that I wanted to like help them with. Like, it just wasn't, it's never the time or it wasn't the time. And, you know, it's a difference between your time and God's time. And, so I, that, that is what I had to learn, but, um, I just had to coach myself to accepting the new version of myself and accepting everything that was around me now and controlling what I can control now, as opposed to trying to control and get back, um, what you were, what I was used to. And I just felt so helpless because of depending on people, but it was like my friend, Anthony Walker, I'll give him a shout out again. Um, because mind you, he went to the same accident and he told a story about how he was going through the same thing where um, he was dependent on people and he wanted to be independent so bad. And people and somebody told him like, yo, you got to let people love you. You got to let people who want to show their gratitude, the things that you did for them, you got to let them love you. And once he told me that I had a whole paradigm shift of everything that was going on for me. I was like, all right, Reg, you have to do it. You have to accept the fact that these you have done enough for the people that was around you, so you can do the same thing uh, and accept love, the same love that people gave you. Oh man, somebody called me. You have to accept the love that people gave you. So once he said that to me, I was able to accept the new version of myself, coach myself, do all of that stuff, and um. So I started to heal. I started, or I'm still healing. I ain't gonna say I started. I'm still healing because even my friend that you guys seen on here, um, he's still healing. So I'm like, I he gave me hope to know that I right, read you're here now, but you can be here if you do the work, if you do, you if, if you make sure you follow the stuff that you're going in therapy and things like that. So I was like, all right, I can, I can still be the new version i can't be the old version but i could be the new version and accept my new life the way it is so i just started reading pouring knowledge into myself started preparing for what i was going to do when i get uh a little bit healthier and just going through all of that process um of just figuring out what's next not holding on what what, what happened what's next and what can i do to improve on my or improve on my situation so that was a big uh paradigm shift for me and so one of the things that was uh let me say tell telling for me another mental hurdle I would say that I went through was the fact that um before I go there I'll talk about therapy so I'm in therapy now currently still to this day and one of the things is I was in a wheelchair man I was in a wheelchair um and just that process of like really just depending on no people was really strenuous man and not even wanting to go into it because it actually is still a a touchy uh topic for me because I still depend on people I can't really walk as fast as I want to like I'm still depending on people but the whole therapy process man I'm so grateful for them people too because they 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 seen how I was and when I came in and now they're, they're very happy of how they, they're seeing the person that everybody loved before the accident. So they're actually happy of what's happening with me as well today. But, um, so I started driving again and one of the mental struggles that I was having was that I was, I, I couldn't remember routes. It wasn't that, um, and I wasn't driving all the time. I just wanted to be able to get behind the wheel once the doctors approve. Um, and one of the things that really was bothering me was I knew how to get, let's see, if I knew a place was here or like, I knew where a place was at, but the route to get there, I couldn't get there. I didn't know how to work route to take. I was taking the long ways. Um, I was, I, I didn't know shortcuts like I used to mind you, like I said, I was doing Uber and I knew my, I knew Philadelphia pretty well. So I knew like the back routes where traffic is going to be, but I couldn't remember how to do it. So that was really mentally tough on me too, because when you come in from a place of just knowing where to go, what to do, moving around and you're like, man, I just can't remember like mentally 
that was playing tricks on me and that was messing with me because I knew I knew where I was going. But um, I had to realize that when you get shaken up like that, you, it's going to take some time for you to adjust and process everything that just happened. So I wind up having to just get familiarized. I wasn't driving, um, just getting, uh, connecting the dots again with um, driving with my fiance. And a lot of people was um, afraid for me. Even to this day, my, my uh, fiance and my mother are still afraid when I go out at night because they don't know if they're ever going to get a phone call like the one they got before. So I know that's going to be a struggle for a while. And even for myself, just driving, um, I don't, I, to keep it honest with you guys, I don't even want to drive in the hood anymore, especially with it getting hot. Um, my, and I got a lot of family and friends that live in those type of areas where um, and the cookouts be popping there. All of the, the good stuff, the, the best water ice, everything uh, that you would want is right there. But I don't I can't take the people walking out in the road anymore. Um, the guys rushing to get where they got to go, the kids going in the ball in the street, like you doing what kids do. Like my, I guess I'm having like, like PTSD from the accident. And I am so afraid to drive in those, those areas because I don't know what's going to pop out and just happen. Cause mind you, the way that accident happened, that was something that was totally out of my hands. So imagine how many total things that we don't pay attention to when, when you regular, like when you regularly drive, you don't pay attention to that stuff. I'm literally focused on everything now for self-preservation. I see the birds flying. I'm like, Oh man, I don't want it to come in the windshield. Like I'm, I'm really mentally distraught by that uh, particular incident. And I feel like with time I'll get over it. Um, but I don't even want to live in an area that has that, to be honest with you, especially with, like I said, with the Nipsey Hussle situation, I'm still trying to process of how I'm going to move forward because, um, fortunately enough, my mom doesn't live in such those such areas, but I really have to figure out what I'm going to do as far as like, um, my relationship with family members and, and, and being around them. Um, cause I, I just, I, I, my, my, my stress, my anxiety, everything being in those certain areas, it really makes me not want to, it, it makes me not want to go. So that's one of the things that I'm still dealing with right now. Um, uh, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, cause I guess that, that brings you guys up to date. Um, what one of the that what what's going on and what and what's been happening um um and that's pretty much what's been new guys uh since the accident um you guys will get the consistency of the podcast back I had to mentally get my mind together and I'm not like I said I'm not always there it's an everyday struggle it's an everyday battle it's I'm every day I'm little by little I'm learning to cope with what the new version of my life is and everything and moving forward trying to adjust um but that's a little bit, uh, that's the insight of what's happening. Um, I'll keep you guys updated as uh, um, things progress. Um, again, shouts out, thank you. Uh, just the utmost praises to all the people that showed up and showed out. Um, I don't want to name anybody individually because um, that's going to take too long. It was so many blessings, man. I cried multiple times during this experience and not even off of pain just gra- gratitude i'm a i'm a big believer of when you expect nothing you are appreciative of anything that you get so the amount of just support just everything that i've gotten from people i was so appreciative of everything and i'm going to end it i'm making this promise if you, if you won't hear from me do do only this um, medium. I'm going to individually thank everybody if I haven't done so already for the amount of support and love that they gave because it was just so many people, man. And I even appreciate the, the people that was waiting on the podcast to come back and is tuning in right now. Like I, I, I'm really appreciative and grateful. And um, honestly, one thing that the accident did for me, you know how everybody had that life changing. Uh, sparking in mind once they go through something like that the one thing i could say that the accident did for me was it made me want to go even harder and helping people man even harder even even so much because time for me time is of the essence now man like i'm on a, a ticking 
honestly, we don't pay it in mind, but we're all on a ticking time clock of um, our lives ending ending at any moment. Um, and even worse, that we all know we're going to pass away or pass on, um, depending on how you look at it, one day. So we're all on the hourglass running out. And now that I've actually it, it brought it to the forefront, man, because I know I want to make an impact, I want to help people, I want to support, I want to show love. I, I You probably, if you're listening to this, you probably know that I've reached out to you. I've reached out to you. How can I help you? How can I support anything that I can do within my realm of um, abilities that I have? Let me know because I want to show you love. I want to show you support. I want to show you, I want to give people their flowers right in here. I want to do all the things because at an instant, it could be gone. Um, I don't want to argue. Like even with my fiance, she said the the one thing she learned is during that time she didn't care about nothing that was going on, any of that. She all she cared, she didn't care about no car, um, being messed up as far as like uh, uh having a loan or having anything in her name, anything like that. Um, it was like, yo, is he alive? That's it, and that's all we should be caring about. One of the lessons that I, another lesson that I learned was, man, all of these things we fighting over and and social media and all that all that stuff man that's 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 so small on the grand scheme of thing that's so small um man I, I always say to people that that are mad or that's bickering to other people and even before the accident I did this but it just brings it closer to home I'm, I'm like yeah if that person died would you care about this and the answer is always no but they're like man I don't care right now my emotions but if we carry that um mentality into any situation especially with family and people that you really care about i feel like a lot of things could be it to, could be solved but because we're so involved with our emotions we forget that i have a, a, a someone very close to me that's in the hospital right now um she's in the hospital on life support nipsey's that man still recovering from my accident so a lot of that stuff is making me just appreciate the value that is life and and the gift that is life. And I just want everybody to to use my story and to use what everything that I'm I'm going to do that you guys that I have a lot more stuff coming away. I talked about the book, please go purchase that. Um the coaching program if you need help starting anything, podcast, um, book, just mental clarity coaching, just figuring out the you see the mental struggles and the process when you need help, somebody help guiding you and help you with that, reach out to me, man. I'm 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 happy to support. Um, I'm starting to speak. I'm going into these communities and schools and, and colleges and speak to these kids and just uh, and, and supporting the podcast. Everybody that subscribe, please subscribe, please show love. And man, like I said, I'm just grateful. And I don't even remember how I ended it and how I used to end it. But I thank you for everybody that support. Um, subscribe to the podcast. Um, um, and one more thing, you guys might see some changes to what's going on. It's because I, I'm really focusing and strategizing. So you might see some ads coming up. You might you might see uh, just a bunch of changes coming up with with, with my with everything that I have going on. And um, like, I thank you, thank you, man. And I listen. I see you next week with a new guest back to the regular schedule program. Thank you again. And honestly, I'm not even ashamed to love that. I love all y'all, man. Peace.